one of your attorneys told me that a woman called Billie Jean Jackson called and said, stop accepting any paychecks, Mr. Attorney. I'm the wife, and I'm and Billie Jean taking it, obviously, from your hit song. Yes. I mean, how do you... How do you what, so first of all, does it affect you, the rumors? Does it affect me? Yeah. Um, yes, but I become immune in a way, too. I'm very strong. I have rhinoceros skin, and... Um, but at the same time, I'm human, you know, so uh, anything can hurt like that, you know. But I'm very strong, um, and uh, I just don't like people hearing about such false information. For instance, did you father quadruplets last year? That was a crazy rumor. That, uh, uh, no. Then they became twins, I know. I don't know what happened to the other mm -hmm. two. Maybe they were abducted yeah, by about, aliens. Yeah, I heard about that story. No, I, I don't have any twins. And they said I'm hiding them or something? No, it's come another made-up rumor. So it's completely false. Yeah, I think the the bigger the star, the bigger the target. I'm not trying to say I'm the super-duper star. Of the city. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you know, the fact that uh, people come at celebrity. We're targets. And... Uh, but the uh, truth always prevails, and I believe in that. I believe in God, you know? Does that faith sustain you? Of course it does. How about friendship? What about friendship? Do you rely on friends? Have people stayed with you through thick and thin? Who are your best friends? Uh, my children and my family, my brothers and my sisters. And, uh, yeah, most people have. Most people have. Do you want to mention the names of the... True Blue? The Faithful, you would know them, so it's... Uh, Elizabeth Taylor? Well, she's very loyal. I see Elizabeth all the time. She's my dear friend. I was just at her house. We had wonderful talks on the phone at night, uh, several times a week sometime. So how long have you two been friends? I've known Elizabeth closely since I was 16, yeah. And you've been making music since you were five? Yes. So you're in your fifth decade. That's 41 years of making music. Yes. You ever get sick of it? No. No, not at all. I never get enough of it. Really? Really. Do you ever get sick of Randy? <laughs> <laughs> never, he, never. He's never. here, ladies and gentlemen. That's why. Never. He's, he's wonderful. He's been very supportive and amazingly brilliant, really. It's, they're, they're all different. Your whole family is Every crazy, brother and sister is like completely my different. Like any family, you know, you have all the different elements and everybody's different. That's what makes it a family. When you have such intense scrutiny, how do you live any kind of normal life? How do you, you know, have any fun outside of your own property? I don't. I go off property sometimes, but not all the time. I create my world behind the gates, you know, because I can't go to the local movie theater down the street or the local park down the street or go pick up ice cream at the market, at the corner store. So you want to create that world behind the gates. And um, that's what I try and do. And it's not just... Uh, for me, if I could share with my family or friends or whoever I do. No? And that necessity for some privacy drives all these, uh, these, th these crazy rumors and speculations. So it's a difficult balancing act that you have to endure. Yes, yes. It's part of what comes with celebrity. You know? But you're not complaining, are you? I no. don't. I try no. to, you know, <laughs> rub it off. Not that I'm... The I don't know what I'm the king of. Uh, <laughs> king of getting best. shot at, maybe. No, 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 no. <laughs> king of journalism. So what is it about children in distress? You mentioned the tsunami relief effort. Yes. What, it, what is it? Is it? Is it your own fatherhood that motivates that? Caring and reading the Bible, learning about God, Jesus, love. Jesus said, bring on the children, imitate children, you know, be like little children. And... Uh, to take care of others, to take care of old people. And we were raised with those values. Those are very important values in my family and I. We were raised with those values and they continue strong in us today. When we come back, Jackson talks about a musical reunion with his brothers for a wonderful cause. That is after this. We're family. That's what we are. And my mother is strong, my father's strong. We're even stronger together, and but we didn't know that from those humble beginnings, the success would bring about this.
You know, I've taken firm and very public positions on every major case from O.J. Simpson to the Clinton impeachment, but none has generated the negative attention of this one. In a spirited exchange last night with Jay Leno on The Tonight Show, I figured out why. It's that every one of us has formed an indelible image of Michael Jackson over the years. It's one forged by events as far-ranging as the defendant's plastic surgeries, to the changing skin color, to what some consider his bizarre public or private behavior. As I said to my friend Jay Leno last night, none of that is relevant to the question of whether or not he molested the boy. In this relatively short segment, Jackson talks about what's ahead for him professionally, assuming, as I do, that he beats this case. What about movies for yourself again? Dorothy and Toto. What intelligent names. <laughs> you had the whiz and some of the others, but we haven't seen you on the big screen in a while. It's because um, I'll be directing myself. I love directing. I love creativity. And I think when an artist steps forward with a production of some type, if he can express himself the way he sees it should be done, I mean, I, I, I feel it and I see it. I'm visionary. So, uh, if I can give that, I, I do, and that's, that's what I love to do with music, with, with film, with dance, with the, uh, I love the arts. And do you think art has a role in real life? And I'm specifically referring to this record and Tsunami Relief. Yes. You're doing this song for Tsunami Relief. Tell us the moment you recognized that this disaster was so extraordinary. I saw it the day after, uh... I think it was, uh, yeah, after Christmas. And uh, as the numbers kept building and escalating, it just became phenomenal. And not even I could believe that it was true. I was, I was amazed. I said, um, I felt I should do something. Um, that's what God gave us talent for, to give and to help people and to give back. And so my brothers and I decided to uh, put a song together. Would you pick up the phone and say, hey, bros? Yeah, yeah, let's Randy get together and myself, again? yeah. You say, hey, we, we want to do something in the studio for the tsunami victims, and uh, let's get together. And they'll say, great, let's do it, you know, and uh, we'll organize. However you're back, I think people will appreciate the fact that you're back. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you kind of exult in, the, in a world where you could concentrate on your art and your kids? And I would love it. I mean, that's, that's what drives me. Is the medium, this, uh, the art. I love it. And uh, that's the world I'm most comfortable in. In Gary, Indiana, did you ever expect where your world would be as a 46-year-old man? I never thought about it, really. I never thought about it. I knew I wanted to do something wonderful in my life and to help people. And, uh, but I never really clearly thought about it when I was really little. I just sang and danced and didn't understand why people were applauding and clapping and screaming. And you really don't. You don't know what, why. When you grow up like that on stage, when do you get it? When do you understand where you fit into society? I think it takes longer uh, when you get older. You start to have a more rounded personality and your brain starts to grow. You start reasoning and understanding more things and researching, and, you know. That's isn't, how it happened for me. Isn't it nice to have a conversation on television where people can hear you just being ordinary, normal, reasonable? Um, I'm like this all the time. Uh, I'm just being myself. Well, God bless you. Thank you.